Hey, what's going on, friends? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Yan. I hope you're doing well. I really do hope that. Apologies for the semi-nudity, but I'm roasting in my studio today. Welcome back to Chelsea News, the daily series here on the channel where I see what's being said about Chelsea and we talk about it. I give you my opinion and more importantly, I ask for yours. Yada, 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 yada. Roman Abramovich, ooh -hoo, never out of the headlines. The former Chelsea owner had been funneling over a hundred million pound into Vitesse. Uh, there, yeah, uh, there's a long read on this, which I'm not going to read. I'm going to read a shorter uh, aggregation of information from Goal, uh, the Guardian originally reporting on it, and talk about that because it's a pretty sensational story also the relocation of Stamford bridge potentially to earl's court hitting the headlines once again mm -mm -mm. big stories ladies and gentlemen big stories indeed and i'm glad you're you're joining me to um peruse said stories today so thanks for joining me and uh, thank you for dropping like on video and uh, yeah, you're welcome to subscribe and should you choose to do so, you should hit that sweet, sweet bell, baby. All right then, Roman, what's been going on? Goal.com, uh, James Hunsley, ex-writing, ex-Chelsea owner Roman Abramovich secretly pumped 103 million pounds into Vitesse. The meme of Vitesse. Players that we've got playing in the squad right now. Armando Bria, Mason Mount, did the Vitesse gig. So many Chelsea players did the Vitesse gig. And people wondered about this special relationship. I guess their initial thoughts were, well, you know, Vitesse, uh, they've just got a relationship with Chelsea. Chelsea send players there to play. Vitesse get good players for a bit. It's fine. Let's find out. Dutch club Vitesse received 117 million euro in loans uh, from then Chelsea owner Roman Abramovich, a recent report has found. So what happened? Well, that's according to an exclusive from um, The Guardian. They write that Abramovich played a key part in funding the Vitesse takeover of 2010, which was headed by former Georgia international uh, Marab Jordanea. The findings, which stem from a cache of leaked data, it's always leaked data, isn't it? It's like Man City stuff all over again, known as the Oligarch Files. Jesus Christ, wait till that comes out on Netflix, the Oligarch Files appear to show the secret backing flowed, that the secret backing flowed through several in, uh, entitles registered in offshore tax havens. Mm. The bigger picture. The Guardian notes that Vitesse have already been on the radar of the Netherlands Football Association over their alleged relationship with Abramovich. Jordanea, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, was a reported friend of the oligarch and was succeeded by his associate and Russian businessman, let's see if I can pronounce this, Alexander Chigurinsky. Not bad, I think. Uh, Vitesse also became a partner club to Chelsea and took many of their loanies from 2010 onwards, which Nemanja Matic, what the Matic, Matic, and Mason Mount as recently as two standout examples. Bruyer, after Mount as well. Um, and what's more, however, the offshore havens utilised uh, by Abramovich were, the Guardian writes, so opaque as to evade the Dutch authorities on two occasions. Now it's come to light that this alleged bankrolling while owning Chelsea has not only covered Vitesse's 2010 takeover, but also their spending that followed. The report adds the Dutch outfit's total turnover between 14 and 15, by 14, 15, excuse me, uh, we won the league that season, um, was 14 million euro, a significant amount for the club of their stature. So Vitesse are like a smaller club in the Eredivisie. And the Eredivisie is um, a, a not very financially juiced league. Look, can I just say, right, like, what I don't get here is, why don't you... I mean, clearly it's, it's involved with a takeover. But why don't you just buy the club if you're trying to get used out of it? Like, this, it's not like this is a new thing now. The City Group have done it. The RB model. Buy a multi, multiple clubs in different leagues. It's not like Chelsea are going to be playing Vitesse much 
in European competition. I, why didn't they just buy it? I mean, I'm sure there's reasons, but I don't know them. <laughs> um, okay, so look, this goes on. It's pretty interesting. So the ramifications are not are unknown yet, although UEFA laws stipulated that European clubs have to be independently owned to ensure the integrity of competitions, meaning, yeah, which is bollocks or nonsense, because like I said, this, you know, RB model owned different clubs, the City Group granted owned different clubs internationally. Pretty darn interesting. Fortunately, this isn't a story that can hurt Chelsea now, but I have a little feeling that as the years go by, we might learn more and more about certain things Mr. Abramovich was doing in um, perhaps the shadows. Um, as a Chelsea fan, this was clearly something in the interest of Chelsea Football Club. Um, yes, it was probably wiggling around your way for rules, um, which I don't really overly feel morally t tainted by and you know it gave Chelsea a place to develop players you do you with your opinion on that the thing you know and the aforementioned Mason Mount of course huge story at the moment I did a video yesterday on you know the Athletic have reported on him again probably going to another team and I, that is just going to be such a story no matter what your position is i'm not talking about mason mount in this video i just want to quickly reference it no matter what your position is on mason mount staying going good bad one thing is for sure and everyone surely will recognize is mason mount going to a bayern munich or a liverpool or a united or whatever and doing well will remain a massive story for chelsea and they and the people will even if you don't believe in like the seller um, uh, De Bruyne and to a degree Lukaku initially because we ended up buying him back for 100 million um, even if you don't put Mason Mount you know because he's not going to score goals or get assists like those guys um, it, people will lump him in w with that story and that continued growing narrative and it would just make us look rather silly anyway we're going to talk about Stanford Bridge now so let me what you, let me know what you think about the, uh, the Abramovich Vitesse situation does that shock you? to compel you um and let's move on okay so the times did an article on uh, stamford bridge but i'm going to be reading my not so favorite uh article <laughs> publisher the mail because it looks like they've aggregated a story here of course this is a huge story for chelsea uh the new ownership that todd bowley clear late gang them they understandably want to get the ball rolling as quick as possible because not only was it part of the terms when they bought Chelsea from the aforementioned Abramovich what they bought they didn't buy it from Abramovich they bought it from the state <laughs> the government I don't know or they just bought it from thin air uh, but that was part of the terms uh, that you've got to invest and you've got to build a new stadium but they want they'll want to do it sooner rather than later anyway because um, it will ensure they can make more money and there's a multitude of reasons why a better stadium is better for Chelsea I think everyone agrees with that uh, Chelsea hope to decide whether to build a new stadium at Earl's Court or to stay at Stamford Bridge this summer so they're deciding soon but furious fans tell Todd Bowley he faces Super League style protests if we move away Earl's Court's very close by the way but I understand this and this is obviously a delicate matter Chelsea are hoping to decide whether to commit to the remaining at Stamford Bridge or pursuing a new stadium at Earl's Court this summer. I think it's like an 18 minute walk, isn't it? I saw. But have reportedly been warned the latter could result in fan protests. A complete rebuild of Stamford Bridge, redeveloping the stadium or relocating in Earl's Court are among the three options uh, for the stadium project. Of course, we spoke about this a few weeks ago. Matt Law wrote about it, a good piece, and we reacted to that. Sports Mail revealed that Chelsea's American ownership is considering building a new stadium at Stamford Bridge that could cost up to two billion, but would involve them playing an alternative venue for four years, either at Fulham's Craven Cottage, Twickenham, or Wembley. Of course, we've just discussed this uh, quite recently. It does seem feasible in terms of playing the smaller home games, like Premier League smaller home games, less high profile at Craven Cottage, great small pitch and the bigger profile ones or European games in probably Wembley going between the two would make sense logistically it would be frustrating but 
you know, got to break a few eggs, etc. Owners told Bowley and Clear Lake Capital are determined to transform the stadium into one, well, into a world-class venue, which would mean not retaining any of the current stands should they opt to remain. A 60,000-seat ground on a 40-acre site in Earl's Court remains an option, which was previously considered in 2013, of course, under Abramovich, which we've spoken about. Um, according to the Times, Chelsea's board are hopeful of deciding their preference this summer, but will not commit to a decision until time frames and costs are fully evaluated. Hmm. The club have been warned they could face significant protests, which helps to end the European Super League project in 2021, should they decide to leave the bridge. Yeah, Chelsea's um, was at the forefront of the Super League protests. Of course, the images... Um, Chelsea pulled out first publicly and it was reported uh, and then the Chelsea protesting fans heard that as they were there and there was this sort of I wasn't at the protest but there was clearly this like pal palpable <coughs> excuse me palpable moment of success and there were loads of images of like you know there's European clubs saying Chelsea have saved football like in, in other leagues obviously it was a sort of sensational headlines and whatever but it was like a big big story and of course you've got like the iconic photos of like Petr Cech dressing the fans and all that kind of stuff you know so pretty interesting so there's an anti Earls court group and as reportedly established by concerned fans who have passed questions to the Chelsea's fan advisory board if they consider Earls court we might need the same supporter demonstration that put um the Super League to an end or whatever so that's pretty Pretty stern, like, you know, uh, threats there. Todd Bowley has given a guarantee that Chelsea will stay. Oh, he hasn't get. Oh, no. He has to give a guarantee. <laughs> they want his word, basically. So there's no protest. Um, yeah. Okay. We're going to save the bridge campaign in the 80s. This is uh, the second one, essentially. Bridge 2. And, um, yeah. Man, this is pretty, like heavy do you know what i mean so chelsea have an option to buy additional land next to stanford bridge that wouldn't actually give them that much more space looking at it they'd have to really cleverly reorganize and do like neat packing to get this bigger stadium in and to to you know shape it better i suppose and i don't know man like it's, it's, so, it's in such a good location stanford bridge in terms of like the exits and entrances like the front and fulham broadway and you know the other the back gate and stuff like this it's, it's got a nice flow to it um and it would be obviously or anything would be better the extension would be better with the new land or Earl's Court Earl's Court would be easier for the owners because it's down the road they can start fresh they can stay at this Stamford Bridge while they build it and they, oh, the aperture has gone really bright on this and uh, I can un kind of understand why they want to do that at the same time, I have great sympathy for the people who are just like, no, this is Stamford Bridge. This is where we've always been and we can't move. This is, you know, this is where the culture is, where, you know, Osgood's ashes are um, buried underneath the stadium, I think. I think I might be wrong there. But, you know, like, you know, there's a hallowed Stamford Bridge ground that this team has, you know, won a league title in the 50s, the FA Cup in the 70s. The players played there, you know, two European Cups in recent memory i get it man like you may try to tell the scousers they're going to move from anfield or united that they're going to move from um you know um old trafford of course arsenal went from uh, they went to the emirates didn't they man city moved as well maybe chelsea have to do the arsenal man city thing i don't know the arsenal fans are happy as larry now you know the emirates is rocking it wasn't like that for a long time by the way it wasn't like that for a long time. But, you know, now the atmosphere there is meant to be insane. Um, and they're top of the league. They look like, you know, I don't want to wait that long until... And also, you could use West Ham as an example. That's tough, isn't it? Because they went to the Olympic ground or the London Stadium. And it's never really felt like their home. There's only been a few occasions when they've sort of got it going. But that's different. They bought a stadium and converted it. Chelsea would build a stadium for atmosphere. They're Tottenham. Bloody Tottenham, the new, <laughs> bloody Tottenham, the new Tottenham Hotspur Stadium uh, after White Hart Lane. Although that's on the same site, basically, isn't it? Didn't they build it just behind or something? Still, point being, it's a completely new stadium, slightly, you know, down the road or whatever. It's so tough. 
I think Chelsea fans, I don't, it's so rough, isn't it? Because it's not like West Ham where you move away from the bowling ground you, and then you're fighting relegation battles in that massive solar stadium. It will be, no, it will be built for atmosphere like the new Tottenham Stadium. It won't be that far. It's rough. It's really tough. I, I mean, I loved going to Stamford Bridge. I haven't been in ages, but I used to go quite often. And I love it. I don't, and I'd feel, you feel like, it, feel like you're back at the bridge. So, like, a new stadium would just be weird. I get from, like, um, a new location, I mean, you know, because if it's new walls and stuff, you'd like it, but it's still Stamford Bridge, Fulham Broadway and stuff. Whereas I get, like, perhaps if you're an international fan who doesn't have the ability to go to Stamford Bridge and you're sort of viewing it externally as this sort of uh, entertainment experience in isolation, then perhaps you wouldn't mind. You just you just want to see on your TV a nicer stadium inside. And... Um, I get that, you know? So it's really tough. It's really, really tough. And it's not going to be easy. But ultimately, it's going to be for moving in a better direction. And it will be moving for the positivity of Chelsea, I think. Let me know what you think. Comment down below. And I thank you for your interactions, leaving a like, subscribing, etc. etc. And I'm going to wind it up. So, um, yeah, keep it locked. Turn the bell on. Because as soon as the story drops, I will give it to you, my friend. The story, that is. All right, peace.